Hi, this is Joseph from Mijonifoto.com, and in today's lesson, I'm going to be teaching you how we can move specific elements of our photo. So this is a picture that I'm very fond of. I really love the cactus, uh, the silhouette of this cactus against this really beautiful Arizona sunset. But in all honesty, when I was out shooting this picture, uh, I was so far from my subject that I completely missed uh, the moon here in the photo. I was just so focused on the cactus and the sunset that I wasn't really paying attention to the uh, edges of my frame, which is kind of a bad habit for me. Uh, so yeah, when you're out shooting, make sure that you are aware of all of your frame when you're photographing a landscape. So when I got home and I noticed that I had this really beautiful moon in the picture, I kind of kicked myself because if I had known it was there, I would have simply recomposed and maybe put this moon down here. And that would have been a much better visual payoff to where your eye would just kind of lead up the center of this frame past the sunset and then up to the moon, which would be sort of a visual payoff. Uh, so since it's too late now, I can't go back and reshoot this scene, maybe there's a way I can fix it in Photoshop. Maybe I can move the moon from here down to there. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do today. So to get started, you need to right-click your photo, click Edit In, and then click Edit In Fo Adobe Photoshop. Now, I did that previously to save us a little bit of time. And here we have our photo in Photoshop. So the first thing we need to do is we have to duplicate our background layer. Uh, so to do that, you're just going to click on your layer over here. Uh, let's see. You're going to click and hold on your layer, and then you're going to drag it down to this little icon to the left of the trash can. Now that is going to duplicate your background layer, so you will have two layers that are completely identical to each other. Uh, the first thing we want to do is hide our top layer and then make sure that we have this bottom layer unlocked. You see this little padlock here? That means that the layer is locked. So you want to go ahead and unlock that. And good. Now we have just our bottom layer showing through. The first thing we want to do is we want to take care of this moon here. We actually want to make it disappear. We want to make it go away. So to do that, let's tap the Z key to bring up our zoom tool. And let's zoom in on our tool, oops, on our uh, moon, excuse me. Okay, there we go. Now, we want to make this disappear, so we're going to try to blend it away. The best way to do that is to go into our lasso tool, tap the L key, and then make a nice large selection around this moon. It doesn't have to be perfect, just make it, uh, just give yourself a good, uh, width of room around the moon. Now once you do that, hit Shift F5. If you're using a MacBook Pro, hit Function Shift F5. Oh, excuse me. Before you do that, you need to make sure that you're actually clicked on the layer that you want to work with. So on the right, hand, right lower hand of the screen, uh, that layer zero, we want to click on that because this is actually the layer that we want to disappear this moon from. Okay? So while we're clicked on the layer, hit Function Shift F5, or just sh uh, Shift F5 if you're on a desktop, and then you will bring up the fill box. Now make sure that we have the content aware selected and hit OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to fill in this area with all of the pixels around our selection. And it did a very good job here. So we're going to hit Command. Command is Control on a PC. So Command D for deselect. And you can see that moon has disappeared and we can't even tell it was there at all. So let's go ahead and zoom out, Z, right click, and then click on fit to screen. And there you go, that moon has effectively disappeared. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to actually make our top layer visible again. And you see that our moon is going to reappear. Now what we want to do is actually move the moon from here down to here. Now there are a couple ways you can do this. There's always two or three ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. One thing you can do is you can create a selection uh, like so and then you can go to your move tool and you can actually uh, move that selection. Actually uh, let's make this disappear and you can see you can move the selection like so. We're gonna go ahead and hit um, Option Command Z and then we're gonna do that a couple times until we're back 
to our original state. Option Command Z um, actually goes back a step. Each time you hit that uh, the, those set of keys, you're going to go back a step. If you go up into Edit, this is actually the step backward uh, function. Okay, just in case you're using a PC. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this layer visible. We're going to actually click on this top layer. Now again, we could make a selection around the moon and move it, but for whatever reason, I have a lot of trouble doing that in this particular image. I think it's because the moon is so small. Um, it, I just have trouble moving the moon. So the next best way to do this is to select the layer, go to the move tool. You can hit the V to go to the move tool and then just drag the entire layer. Now you see we're dragging the top layer against the bottom layer and that's why we're seeing it this way. And what we're going to do is we're just going to move the moon to where we feel it needs to go. Now I want it to be right in that, that little V between the clouds. I want it to be right up there. So I'm going to dra drag it right there and I'm going to hit the eyeball key to make that disappear and reappear. That looks pretty good. I might just move it over a little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now that we have our moon positioned where we want it to be, we'll hit enter to save in that, that uh, move setting. You have to always do that. When you're moving a layer, you want to always hit enter to save that feet function into it. And now we're going to go back to the marquee tool. We're going to actually click on it and hold it. You see where I am up in this corner? We're going to click and hold. And we're going to go to go to the elliptical marquee tool. We'll zoom in just a little bit. Okay, go to the marquee tool, and we're going to make a nice selection around the moon like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom out. Now that we have our selection, what do you think is the next thing we're going to want to do? Well, if we're essentially we want to make everything around the selection disappear. So we're going to create a simple layer mask. To do that, we just select this button, the third from the right in this lower set of icons. We're going to click on that. And as you can see, it created a layer mask. If we hold Option and click on that, la that layer mask, you can see uh, white reveals and black conceals. So we're essentially concealing everything around the selection and only making uh, that circle selection shine through. Now, the obvious problem here is this looks like garbage because the tones from the area that we pulled the moon up in the top of this image are much darker than the tones down here. So it doesn't work at all. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. <clears throat> now, one thing we could do is we could maybe try to mask out the moon, uh, but the problem with that is, as you can see, it's, it's just not going to look natural because we have the sliver of the moon, but you can still faintly see the circle of the moon around here. So you don't necessarily want to blend all of this out. And it's it's really not going to look good because you, even though you have a sharp, a hard edge with the moon, you still have this faint light that kind of gradually fades it out. So we're not going to be able to just mask out this uh, dark color. The next best way to do it is to actually match the colors from this layer mask in our circle selection to the colors outside of that selection. The easy way to do that is to make sure that you are clicked on the layer that you want to work with. Always remember to do that. Always remember in Photoshop to make sure that you are clicked on the layer that you want to work with. So we're going to click on that layer and we're going to go to the channels. Now what the channels do is we have red, blue, and green and then we have all of the layer masks that we've created below that. Um, Channels are essentially just uh, black and white versions or grayscale versions of your image. So if we click on this, we can see a grayscale version of our image. Well, we can blend the tones of this layer by simply clicking on the channel and holding Command and tapping L. And that is going to bring up our levels uh, box. Excuse me. Now that we have this pulled up, we just want to drag this slider in the middle until we have blended our colors together. Okay, so you just want to drag this until you can't really tell the difference between either layer, okay? Now, if you watch my videos, you know that I don't really like using sliders. I prefer 
to use my arrow key to make fine-tune adjustments. You can do that in Photoshop by simply clicking on uh, these numbers in the middle and then you can use the arrow keys up and down to adjust that. Now if you hold the shift and use the arrow keys then you are going to adjust this by a much larger increment. So let's go ahead and uh, adjust this until it's blended to the point that we can't even notice it. A good trick is to kind of hold your head back a little bit from the screen and squint and that makes it a little bit easier to judge whether or not those tones are kind of blending well. Now you don't need to get it completely perfect. Oops, sorry guys, I'm about ready to run out of batteries. Okay, sorry about that delay. I'm using a laptop here. And I failed to plug her in. Okay. All right, there we go. We have juice. Okay. So back to what we were doing. We were blending these colors together, or a better way to put it is that we're matching the tones of our colors together. So that looks pretty good. We're going to hit OK, and then we're going to go down to our next channel. Okay. We're going to hit Command L. And we're going to do the same thing. Click on it and then use our keyboard to blend that out. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Down to the last channel. Command L. Click on the uh, number in the middle. And this time we're, we're going to keep blending this out. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. All right, now obviously you're not going to need to do anything with the actual layer mask itself because that's just a layer mask. And as you can see, when we got to make sure to click back on the RGB channel. Otherwise, we're going to still, when we go back to our layers, we're going to still be working in the, uh, the, the red, blue, or green channel that we selected. So go back to the RGB channel. And if we actually go to our history here, we can see a before and an after. So as you can see, those tones are blended much, much better. I mean, again, before and after. So that looks a heck of a lot better than it did before. However, it still doesn't look completely perfect. I mean, you can still clearly see the selection um, around our layer. Uh, an easy way to fix that is we will go back to our layers, click on our layer mask down here, and you just actually want to double click on the layer mask and all we need to do is feather our selection. The reason why we have this hard selection here, this hard edge, is because we have no feathering to our selection. So go ahead and slide the selection, this feather up. Now again, you can use the keys here. We're going to slide that up and if we go to about 50 we're going to see that that perfectly blends out that hard edge. If we go further than 50, uh, we go too far that it actually blends out the moon. So 50, right around 50 is the sweet spot for this, where we're blending out the hard edge, but we're leaving our moon alone. So there you go. There you have it. Let's look at a before. There's our before. And there's our after. It looks pretty good. Now, we could still adjust this like so. We can still move the moon around. All we have to do is make sure that we're clicked on our layer. Okay? And we can move the moon around wherever we want it. Just keep in mind that if you move it too far, you're probably going to have to do that uh, channel adjustment again because you're uh, you're moving it around to different tones of the image so if, if you moved it higher you're gonna have to uh, adjust those channels because the tones are gonna be darker up here than they are down here so it's not gonna work if you move it too much okay let's go ahead and zoom in on that one more time yeah that looks great voila so now we have effectively moved the moon to a much better position in our photo. Now what we can do is, uh, if we wanted to, we could actually do a simple crop in Photoshop. So let's just uh, let's 
hold the shift key. Whoops. I don't really crop too much in Photoshop, so uh, let's see. Maybe down here like that. Yeah, and there you go. That looks a little that that looks a lot better. Now we have a nice tight image with the silhouette of the cactus and the visual payoff of well, I guess the visual payoff would really be the sunset, but we have this nice little uh coup de gras on the top of our image uh of this beautiful crescent moon. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, stay tuned for more and thanks a lot. Take it easy.